Hi everyone, welcome to the channel, heading to Cotter 2022, uh, where I give you information about Cotter in preparation for you coming down to the 2022 World Cup. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss crime in Cotter and what you can maybe expect when you come down to the World Cup. Cotter has one of the lowest crime rates in the world. It's actually a very, very safe country. Um, so much so that sometimes Cotteries can have issues when they go abroad because they're just so used to these low crime rates. Like uh, one time I was uh, uh, vacationing with friends out in Vancouver and we were all sitting at a sidewalk cafe and a guy came up to beg for change. Then I looked down at the table and they all had their phones out sitting on the table. And I was just like, ah, what are you guys doing? I mean, I mean, okay, nothing happened, but I mean, it would have been very easy for someone to just run by, we were right up by the sidewalk, run by, snatch the phone, run off. But for them, they, they just don't think about that because that just doesn't happen in Cotter. Like you're used to just leaving things out because no one's gonna steal it. That's sort of how safe the country is. As an example, I believe in the most recent news reports, remember this is in the newspaper, there was um, someone who was arrested for breaking into cars. And I think by that it was just, you know, he was trying the doors to see if they were unlocked or not or whatever, and then going in stealing things. And the police formed a task force to actually catch this guy. Yes, yes, that's how rare this is, that the police formed a team to try to figure out who was breaking into cars and they arrested the guy. Um, there was a big story in the paper about a car in uh, the Lucille neighborhood which drove onto a pedestrian walkway and drove along there. Didn't hit anyone, didn't harm anybody, but you know, whoa, someone drove on the pedestrian walkway. This is news, like this made the newspapers. And of course, there's the uh, usual COVID prosecutions. Um, they typically levy fines for anyone found violating the COVID rules. I'm still surprised this is happening. There aren't many COVID restrictions on at the moment. Like you have to wear masks indoors and um, you have to uh, show your tracker app to enter buildings, but that's pretty much it. And yet still lots of people fawning the rules and thus, you know, receiving fines and warnings for it. As for gun crime, that too is quite rare. I believe it is illegal for citizens to own guns and certainly expats can't own guns. So um, any guns that are available should typically be in, with the police or the military. That said, gun crime does happen. I believe a few months ago, there was one shooting and I think it was the only shooting that occurred in the last, I don't know, five, six years. And it was all, everyone was just like, whoa, there was a shooting? What? No way. Um, it was a cuttery gentleman who had been turned away by security at a compound. So then went back to his home, got a gun, which I believe was illegal. I guess the, he had an illegal gun, came back and opened fire on the security guard. So it wasn't even really like just sort of you're walking along the street and someone appeared with a gun and tried to rob you. It was, uh, it was something different. But even then, that was been like the only gun crime I had heard of in like the last six years. And Doha is over 2 million people. And that is how rare crime is, especially property crime and things like that. I've never heard of a mugging. I've never heard of a pickpocketing. Um, I've never had anything happen to me, never had anything happen to my car. It's unbelievably safe here. That said, I expect crime is going to increase during the World Cup. Why? Because of all the other people who are coming to visit. I mean, if you've gone to these big events, you know that they are a magnet for criminals, pickpockets, petty thieves, beggars, who knows? And so probably the biggest crime danger you're going to face is from other travelers coming to see the World Cup. So. While I've told you that Qatar is incredibly safe and you don't have to worry about stuff, during the World Cup, I wouldn't be just sort of leaving purses and phones sitting on tables or, you know, anything like that. I think you still have to be pretty diligent, but likely because of the other people who are flying into the country, some of whom I think will be flying in 
hoping to take advantage of this huge event to uh, start, you know, uh, pickpocketing or stealing things before they uh, head back home. So that said, if you are the victim of a crime in Qatar, definitely report it to the police. I know that in some countries you get a little jaded about, you know, if it's something minor, something small got stolen, someone stole a phone or a purse or whatever, you're gonna go to the police and they're just gonna be like, yeah, okay, like whatever, and nothing's gonna happen. I know that, you know, in some countries that's sort of the mentality that the, the police aren't really gonna be following up on small things like this. But in Qatar, they probably will, um, especially with the World Cup. There will be a lot of pressure for everything to go smoothly. I know they're flying in police resources from other countries to assist, and I think this would be taken quite seriously. So yes, if you are a victim of a crime, absolutely report it to the police. They will likely take your complaint seriously and will try to look into it. Um, as an aside, as I've mentioned, Qatar is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And the police force are, you know, they're, they're generally very good. They can be a bit authoritarian, but generally they're quite nice. And I know that in some countries it works a bit differently, but believe me, if the police stop you and either, you know, want to ask you a question or there's something going on, they are not looking for a bribe. Okay, don't try to bribe them. Don't, don't think, oh, okay, I got to pull out a bit of money for these guys now. No, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. It'd probably get you into more trouble. They're not looking for a bribe, believe me. Kind of think of it more like, you know, if you're in Britain or Western Europe or whatever, when the police are pulling you over, it is for something. Not, not to shake you down for some money like may happen in some other parts of the world. Don't do that. And uh, listen to what they have to say and uh, be very nice and cooperative. One other thing in regards to begging. Now, in Qatar, begging is basically illegal and it's actually quite rare. You see, everyone in Qatar is either a Qatari, who I've never seen a Qatari beggar, never heard of it. I highly doubt that would ever happen. There is such a huge social safety net for the citizens of Qatar that they would never need to resort to begging. And then otherwise, it's expats who either have jobs, because otherwise they couldn't get the visa to be here, or are sponsored by someone who has a job, family members, a spouse, things like that. So this makes begging quite rare, because you just don't generally have a lot of just, you know, sort of poor people wandering around who, you know, need money. It does happen. Um, I think maybe I would get accosted by a beggar once every couple of months like once every one to two months that would be about it so it it's quite rare but it does happen i expect during the world cup it will increase again because people will be flying in especially people coming through the land border between saudi arabia and qatar Saudi Arabia is not as wealthy a country and it has a lot more expats i think there's over 10 million of them so Sometimes people will come over from Saudi Arabia into Qatar to beg for money. Not necessarily Saudis, but just, you know, anyone who's living in Saudi Arabia because Qatar is such a wealthy country. You know, they try to beg on the streets, maybe make a few hundred real or whatever, and then, you know, head back. During the blockade of Qatar, that three-year blockade, and the border between Saudi Arabia and Qatar was closed, I think I met a beggar once in the three years. So that really made a difference. But of course, the border is open now. And I expect, again, with the World Cup and the hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be here, it will also attract beggars who will be looking for, you know, trying to take advantage of the event to get extra money. Begging is illegal. Um, I'd advise you not to give people money. Um, if they claim they're a cottery and are begging for money, I can tell you right now, they're lying. They're like, no way, not a chance. Um, if you wish, you can also report beggars to the police. They will probably uh, try to deal with it. Uh, typically, they will arrest and detain them, try to figure out why they're in the country, and then probably uh, uh, send them home out of the country. Uh, so I hope this summary helped. Qatar is a very safe place, 
and provided you, you know, just stay mindful about your things, you should have a great time and you don't have to worry too much about uh, being the victim of crime or having stuff stolen. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll be doing more videos as we go along about the preparation for the World Cup and as I learn things, I will uh, create more update videos. Hope this helps. Hope to see you all soon in November.